Lots of people ask me how I made the custom design footer on my website. It's not part of the theme, it uses the Elementor page builder and you can do it really easily too. I'm Dave Foy and I'll show you how it's done. Here's the footer on my website, designbuildweb.co. It's a custom footer built with the Elementor page builder and it's a template which is in the Elementor's template library. It automatically appears on all pages of my site. It's not part of my theme at all, it's totally separate. I use the Generate Press theme on this site, and in fact, every site that I build. But in this case, I have my themes footer switched off totally. We just have a look, it's got an email sign up call to action with a pop up form just within this white box. Top of the box is pulled up and out of the footer area, overlapping the content above it, which is with a nice drop shadow to help it stand off the page. It works really nicely responsively. I also got a couple of custom menus here too. I'll take you through it all step by step. There's an overview of the process. Firstly, we're going to create the basic Elementor template in the plugins template library. We'll make the white sign up box, uh, then we'll add the pop up, then we'll add the two custom menus, and then finally we'll make it so that this template is pulled into the footer area of all pages of the site automatically. And by the way, if you want my own Elementor footer template that you're looking at now, that you can just import into your own projects with one click, stick around and I'll tell you how to get it. So the first step is to create the actual Elementor template itself, the footer template. We'll head down to Elementor, my library, then click add new. Now this creates a brand new template, which will eventually become the footer. Give it a title, uh, footer seems appropriate. By default, the blank template will actually include all your theme's usual default template elements, you know, like maybe the theme's header, footer, page title, etc. But we don't want to see those on this template, we want a totally blank canvas. So we'll change the page template for this um, template <laughs> and choose Elementor Canvas. This is just a feature of Elementor that allows you to start with a totally blank page. Now, publish. Now don't worry, Elementor templates don't appear anywhere on your site unless you actually tell them to. And finally, we'll edit with Elementor. That's the template file created, ready to actually build the footer out. So before we start creating all the fancy pants stuff, I'll just make this dark band that stretches across the page. So we go to add new section. Now you'll have noticed in mind that we had three columns, so I'll choose the three column layout for this section. To add this dark colored background to the whole section, we click section here to access the settings. I'm going to set no gap here for the columns gap, just because in this case, I just found it better to control the gaps between columns manually. So we'll do that later. We'll go to the style tab. And it's actually a really subtle gradient background. So I'll add that here. It's such a brilliant feature of Elementor. Now we'll save that and then preview it here. Now we don't really see much yet because the section doesn't actually have any content yet to give it any height. So, um, well, we best do that now, eh? So I'll make the white sign up box first. This is just achieved by giving this first column a white background. So we hover over the column, click it, and then we'll change the color to white over here. And nothing's happened. <laughs> that, that's because the column still doesn't actually have any content in it. So we best remedy that. So over to the widget chooser icon, we'll drag in a heading. Ah, now we have a white column. Now leaving this heading as H2 is fine with me. Let's first replace the text. And then I just want to beef it up a bit. So click style, turn the typography settings on, by default, they're turned off, which just allows your themes styles to shine through, but we want to override that here. So we'll whack the size up to something like uh, 43, um, touch more line height, something like 1.1. All that'll do is for now. Now we'll drag some text in underneath. So I'll drag the text widget underneath the heading. I'll replace the default text. And the default styles for my theme are looking pretty good there, so I won't override the typography for the text. Now we need a button, so back to the widget chooser. Drag in a button widget. And now 
I'll replace the button text and just make a few little style adjustments, a few bit of color and things like that. And the last thing here for now, this column needs a bit of padding inside it for a bit of, a bit of space, a bit of breathing room. So back up to the column settings, then the advanced tab. I'll leave the padding settings linked because they'll be the same all the way around anyway. Um, I'll just bump these up and I reckon 30 looks pretty decent. Now we'll just make this column a bit bigger by dragging the column here. And I think I'll just add a bit of bottom margin to the outside of the column. It just kind of just to push it away from the bottom of the section itself. Um, a bit of 25 pixels bottom margin should do it. Now we need to round off the corners of the white box. Mine have got rounded corners. So back over to style, down to border radius. I think I'll just have it at five pixels. And now we'll just pop that shadow on it that will help it stand out when later on when we pull it out of the top of the footer. But I'll, I'll, I'll just leave the box shadow uh, settings at default, that's fine. Now we'll pull it up so it's popping over the top of the footer. So um, in the column settings, back to the advanced tab. Now just look what happens if we add a positive top margin number. All right, so we'll just add that, bump that up. The box gets pushed down at the top because you're adding margin to the top of the box. So it kind of makes sense that, you know, if we go the other way and we use a negative margin, then instead of pushing it down, it'll, it'll pull it up. I think I have it at something like minus 70 pixels on my site. So we'll do that. Of course, while we're editing, that's now pulled it up and out of the site, where of course on the site itself, it'll actually overlap whatever's going to be above it. So temporarily, um, I'm just going to add some positive top margin to the entire section itself. It will add top and bottom margin actually, just something like 100 pixels. And that's purely just so that we can see what's going on while we're editing. We'll remove it later when we embed it on a page. We, we, we don't want there to be any gap at all between you know, whatever's above it on our page and the footer eventually. So we'll remove it later on. Just, just while we're on the subject of negative margins, I'd actually quite like the gap under the heading and the text, you know, between the heading and the text just to be a bit tighter. So I'll click on the heading, go to advanced. I'll unlink these margins and then I'll add a bit of negative margin to it. And because it's a negative bottom margin, it doesn't, push the content under it away, it pulls it up closer instead. It basically just does the opposite, which is pretty handy. I'll save this, then preview. And that's not bad at all so far. At this stage, I'd always check out what it looks like responsive. So we'll go down here to the responsive settings and choose tablet. Yep, that'll do. And mobile actually pretty nice as well. So I'll just go back to desktop mode for now. So now we'll add the pop-up to the button. Now, as you saw on my site, the button is attached to a pop-up. I don't want this video to be hours long, so I'm going to skip the details of exactly how you do this. I've got another video where I show you in detail how to do it. I'll pop the link to it in the description under this video if you want a, a more kind of thorough walkthrough. The basic idea though is you use the free pop-up maker plugin. Create a pop-up in Pop-up Maker's admin area. Then when you've done that, you go back to Pop-up Maker's all pop-ups kind of dashboard. You copy one of the CSS classes that it gives you on the dashboard. You then paste that into the CSS classes field in the advanced tab of the button widgets settings panel. That basically tells the, the button which pop-up to pop-up. <laughs> Okay, now we'll add these two custom menus. Pretty straightforward, actually. In our main WordPress dashboard, go to Appearance and then Menus. Click Create a New Menu. We'll give it a name. I'll call it something really inventive like Footer Menu. Create Menu. On my site, this menu is linked to the main pages on my own site. So I'd just come over here to the pages area, the pages menu, tick the ones I want, and then click add to menu. I can drag them into the order that I want. We want to ignore the menu settings here 
Uh, these just allow you to assign this menu to a preset location set by your theme, you know, like the, the main navigation or something like that. But we, we don't want to do that in this case. Just save menu here. While we're here, we will might as well make the other menu, the social links menu that I've got. So again, create a new menu, give it a name. Now this menu is made up of links to things like my Twitter um, page, my Facebook page. So I can't just add pages from WordPress, but if I come over here to custom links, I can then pop in the URL and the name for each social channel one at a time. And for this video, I'll just put a hash symbol in the URL field for now, just for speed, but you'd put the, you know, your, your, your proper Twitter URL, your proper Facebook URL, save the menu, and now we just need to add these menus to our footer template. So back to our footer template, to the widget chooser, I'll just search menu. And then what we want is to drag this custom menu widget into the, into the second column, into, this, into this, uh, this middle column. The title is the heading that'll appear above the menu. So we'll call this website or something like that. Um, select menu is, footer menu, so you can see why we had to create the menu first. Then apply, uh, doesn't, look, <laughs> doesn't look great so far, but fear not, we'll sort it out. But while we're here, let's just first add the other one too. So again, back to the widget chooser, and again, search menu. We'll call it social, and we'll choose the social footer menu. Right, let's sort out the awful styling. So first, we need to make the links white. I always say to everybody that I teach, try to make style changes as high up as you can. So, you know, if you change the link color on each individual widget, you'd end up with a bit of a maintenance nightmare in future. So if you set that style rule higher up, just in one place, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add this to the sections, the, you know, the settings for the entire section. And there's only just one place for you to amend it in future rather than multiple places. And that affects everything underneath. So we'll go right back up to the section settings and the style tab. And then under typography, we'll make the links in this section, you know, the entire section, uh, the links white and the link hover color, the lovely pink. Perfect. Now, to make the headings white, I can't set that in the section because it will make the heading in my white box white too, which just wouldn't do. So, all right, I'll go to the column setting here. Then in the style tab, set the text color to be white. Uh, you'd think heading color, I know, and there's a reason why it doesn't work, but it's a bit long-winded to explain why here. But, you know, try the heading. If that doesn't work, try the text color and you should be, you should be good to go. And... To remove the default bullet points that the WordPress custom menu widget adds and to make the, 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 the headings uppercase, honestly, I actually wrote a little bit of custom CSS into the, I popped it into the advanced tab of the section settings. It's pretty simple, but I just had to do that because as I mentioned, the custom menu widget isn't actually from Elementor, so it doesn't have the easy styling controls. Those custom CSS bits are in my template if you want to grab that. These two menu columns need pushing down, so I'll go in and I'll add 50 pixels padding to the top of each column. Now remember, I set the columns gap on the entire section to no gap because I really needed a bit of finer control. So we actually now need to create that nice space in between the columns. So over to the column settings on the white column, advanced, and I'll add a 50 pixel right margin just to push it away from the other columns. And because that now kind of, because of the space that it takes, it now shrinks the size of that column. I'll need to drag the width out a bit more to something like 60% to make it the right size. And that's a lot better. And while we're here, I'll just drag the first menu column to 15%. I think think and that'll leave the second menu column at about 25%. So we'll save the template again and preview. And I think that's looking pretty sweet. So uh, 
again, we'll just have a quick look at responsive. So responsive settings to tablet, not bad at all. And now to mobile, ah, okay. So the first job clearly is to get rid of that 20 pixels right margin I added earlier to the white column. It, it doesn't make sense here. So over to the column settings, and you can see here that we're editing the mobile view only. Unlink the margin values. This makes them all zero, that's okay. Um, we can add a bit of negative top margin back in. Let's see, sort of like minus 25 or so looks fine for, for mobile. Now, scroll past the sign up box. And you can see the two menus need a little bit of love as well. So first we'll go to column advanced, remove the excessive top padding. So we'll unlink and then pop in back in that 20 pixels at the top. And I'll hop over and just do the same for the other column too. Now on mobile, there's actually room to have these two columns side by side. There's, there's not a lot of point in having them underneath each other. So to do that, well, I'll stay in this, in this um, second menu column here. So I'll come down here to responsive in this tab. Click mobile width and custom. And then I'll choose a 50% column width for this column. Um, and then we just need to do the same for the other one. So we'll click the column settings for the first column, do exactly the same. And that looks pretty good. Hop back to desktop view, hit save. And that's pretty much the footer itself done. So we now need just to make this template appear in the footer of all the pages on my site. Now here's how I do it. So firstly, we'll come over to Elementor My Library. Because I'm using Elementor Pro, I've got the short code here anyway, but if you don't have the paid pro version of Elementor, there's a, there's a brilliant free plugin called Anywhere Elementor that also does the job. I'll copy that short code. I'm using the Generate Press theme, as I mentioned earlier. And one of the reasons I recommend it so highly is because of its hooks feature. Basically, it just allows you to pop short codes like this so that they appear in any part of your site you like. You know, there's, uh, there's hooks for footer, header, before the content, after the content, in the sidebar, there's, there's, there's lots of them. Um, I've got a link to Generate Press in the description under this video, but you know, all the themes have got similar features too. I'm gonna to go to Appearance and then GP Hooks, and I'll paste the short code into the before footer content hook. That's the, that's the best place for it to appear. Click Save Hooks. And before we do anything else, notice how in the Generate Press Customizer settings, in Appearance, Customizer, Layout, Footer, I've got my Themes Footer turned off completely. I don't want it on any page, so it's best just to turn it off here. And again, all the themes have got similar sort of functionality, I'm sure. Now, I'll come over to a basic page that I created earlier. All it has in the actual page itself, just, just for this demo, is a, is a testimonial block that I created with Elementor. And you can see underneath it, here's the footer being pulled in using the shortcode that I added to, to GP hooks. Ah, I remember I temporarily added some top and bottom margin to the entire footer section. Uh, just to make it easier to edit. I need to remove it, I totally forgot. So back to edit the template. Click section and advanced. I'll set those margins to zero and then save. Now back to the page again, refresh. All right, so that's better and notice that I had to add a good bit of extra bottom padding to this testimonial block. As I say, I created it in Elementor, so that's really easy. And that just provides a nice bit of breathing space to allow the sticky out bit of the footer underneath it to, to sit. And that's pretty much it. A custom design footer that appears on every page of my site. Now, one question you might have is, what if I don't use the Generate Press theme? Well. Firstly, there are other themes that allow you to disable the footer and that also provide a hooks feature. Um, I mean, just one example, Ocean WP is, is really popular with Elementor users as well and it, it's pretty friendly to non-coders. There's also a plugin called Head, Footer and Post Injections. I've not used it myself actually, but it basically replaces the need for your theme to have a hooks feature. 
you can just tell the plugin to put whatever code you want into the footer area of, area of your theme or in fact anywhere else but you would still need your theme to allow you to disable its own footer. Another option instead of any of that is to use the StylePress plugin. It's a pretty new plugin at the time of me recording this video anyway, but the basic idea is that you kind of bypass your themes, header and footer templates altogether. And instead you create your entire site design in Elementor, then use the plugin to assign your various Elementor templates you've created to be the header part, the, the footer part, etc. And if that appeals, and it's, it's well worth a look. If you want my footer template to import into your own site with one click, then visit designbuildweb.co slash custom hyphen footer. If you're not on that page already, there's a box on that page where you can tell me where to send the template. If you like this video, leave me a comment, like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. My email subscribers get all my best stuff. So subscribe at designbuildweb.co.